Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. It would seem that a new Model S has caught fire in Pennsylvania. Firstly, Norm was in the car at the time of the fire and Norm was injured, fortunately. But the fire department was obviously on the scene. It's actually a little suspicious as there was a witness who reported the car rolling on fire too. The story itself is still developing and they haven't ruled out arson. Now, we must first work out if this Model S is indeed a new plaid and see what we can learn from all this new information. You can somewhat make out the badge on the rear of the car. Although you can't read it, if it's a Model S, aside from plaid, the other options it could be are dual motor or P100D, but they're more distinguishable. So I and others agree that this is most likely the plaid badge. Something else that is still recognizable from the charred remains are the wheels, and they do indeed appear to be the arachnid wheels from the Model S plaid. In addition to that, I think we can also make out some remains of the plaid spoiler. I think that is enough evidence to assume a high probability that this is indeed a Model S plaid. Okay, so what other interesting findings are we able to gather? Well, believe it or not, there's actually a picture of some of the batteries out of the battery pack. That's right we finally get to see the Model S Plaid batteries. Wait for it, and no, they're officially not 4680 batteries. But we have a photo of the batteries. So I then imported the image into Photoshop and tried to measure each battery to gather the dimensions. The different batteries are called different form factors, and the names they carry are related to the different size of the battery can. E.g. 4680 is a 46 millimeter diameter an 80 millimeter height. I'm not able to measure these batteries in millimeters as there is no relative perspective. But if you divide the diameter into the length, you get a ratio difference between diameter and length. If we use this figure, then everything should be in proportion. As you can see in this table, all the lengths, diameters, and ratios of Tesla's different size batteries cans they use. The 18650 has a ratio of 3.61, 2170 is 3.33, and 4680 is 1.74. Now, from the picture of the batteries we have, we can then measure the diameter and the length and try to calculate the ratio. Unfortunately, it is not the greatest quality and a bunch of them are all next to one another. I did measure each one of them though, and I've put all the measurements and ratios in the table too. Now, as you can see, there is a slight variance, but definitely within accuracy to completely rule out the 4680 form. All these other ratios we have are all pretty much right in between 2170 and 18650. And there are also quite a few people speculating that Plaid may be using 2170 form also. I think we can agree that the most credible battery to measure would be the one that is separate from the others, as it is not next to any other batteries and is clearer to see the entire outline. I thought the ratio of this battery was around 3.43, which is 0.1 away from 2170 and 0.18 away from 18650. Clearly the ratio is much closer to the 2170 form. Therefore, the plaid is most likely using 2170 form, right? Well, the images were not great and the angles they were displayed possibly didn't show the entire battery. In other words, these measurements I took, I believe must have been minimum dimensions. But given the diameter is of a circular nature, it is likely to be the more understated figure rather than the length. That would then mean that if any of these plaid battery ratios exceed the 2170 ratio, then it must be the 18650 form factor. Therefore, I'm now placing the highest probability on Tesla using the 18650 battery form, which I know some of you have been trying to tell me for some time and are happy that I'm now on the same side as you. But I appreciate you all for humoring me as I did want to explore the potential of the 4680 batteries. In fact, to reaffirm this even further, Wall Street Journal recently did a review on the plaid. When the Tesla engineer dropped the car off, he also stated that it had 18650 batteries too. A lot of you agree with me that Tesla's future growth is all about the 4680 battery. They need to achieve these in great numbers to reach the success we all seek. And okay, some people think that Tesla is all about FSD. Well, I think FSD is only any good if you can make enough cars in the first place, hence the batteries. This is why I like to investigate what is happening with the 4680 batteries so much. 
but Tesla are not using the 4680 batteries, yet they've achieved absolutely ridiculous performance from these Plaid versions and achieved similar range in the new long range as the previous with a 15 to 20 kilowatt hour smaller battery, not to mention all the other weight saving at the battery pack level. If this is not the 4680 batteries, then what has created such an impressive specification? Well, the reason I was so quick to jump to the 4680 batteries was simply because it's too big an increase, not just from the previous 18650 batteries, but even from the 2170 batteries. So why did I think this could be the case? Well, the new chemistry in the 4680 batteries is much more energy dense, creating much higher performance. Therefore, I was sure this must be the new chemistry. And I would have thought it not be a wise business decision to retrofit your oldest battery version. And sure, there were lots of other reasons why the 4680 made sense too. But okay, Tesla probably know what they're doing better than me, and there must be a reason for them sticking with 18650. I suppose that Tesla still need every battery they can get, no point discontinuing an entire line. Tesla did say that they were having issues with the safety of the new batteries, implying that something had changed with them. Hopefully this is not a result of this fire. Now Panasonic had six months to move over to this new chemistry and perfect the batteries. That seems like plenty of time to achieve this. The thing is, it's not the 4680 battery can that's scarce, it's the ingredients inside the can in the jelly roll. So I'm not quite sure what the opportunity cost was in not moving over to the 4680s. We can only speculate. Perhaps it was even harder to change over the battery line for a new size form. Well, in the Wall Street Journal article, it mentions that the 18650 batteries in the Plaid have been upgraded, which would only further confirm this theory. Previously, the 18650 was using NMC batteries, nickel, manganese, and cobalt. On battery day, we were told of a new cathode chemistry that no longer required cobalt, and a new anode chemistry that now contains silicon. That would give more energy density due to silicon being able to hold more ions than graphite, thus making it more power dense. Then, we also had the new dry slurry technique and the tabless designed batteries. These were the main changes at the level of the battery. In other words, I think it is safe to assume that Tesla have used this combination in the 18650 batteries. With the figures we are seeing, I think they may have gone all the way with the anode, cathode, and jelly roll. But to have gone tabless? Well, that's pretty major. And may not be as easy in the 18650 form. The main advantage of tabless is that it's much faster production speed. Well, these are not mass produced vehicles, so perhaps that is not quite as important. But if they went the same way as the 4680 line, then Tesla may very well have gone tabless. The fact that Tesla have tabless 18650s could be the reason for the new battery pack. Otherwise, I'm not sure of the point of the new battery pack. Other than if it's structural too. But nope, the Tesla engineer in the Wall Street Journal article said the pack was still a bag of potatoes, meaning the cells themselves don't carry any structural load. As in, despite using a new battery pack, it is still not a structural battery pack. We also know that Tesla are not using the Gigapress for the Model S either. In other words, no die-cast molds, which means that the Model S is not taking advantage of the other major improvements we saw on battery day. Yet, we still see Tesla able to achieve this outstanding specification. Also, supposedly, according to Motor Trend, Tesla are achieving all of this with just a 100 kWh battery pack allegedly slightly smaller than the 104 kilowatt hour battery pack in the previous performance version. It looks like this new battery chemistry is amazing. Like is this with the high nickel cathode or nickel and manganese? But the Model S is not the make or break of the company. It is used for a bit of fun and publicity. It is a real shame they didn't introduce the 4680s into their flagship vehicle. Let's analyze what this might actually mean for the company then. Well, I think this shows that Tesla have got very far with their new jelly roll that goes inside the battery cans. Elon had mentioned on the Q1 earnings call that they were still refining the battery production line. I think this was mainly due to the dry slurry technique. But this might be evident that they have sorted these issues. On the other hand, the 18650 might just be a much slower production line, which means less advances are necessary. That may also be the reason Tesla stuck with that form factor. But why not have at least gone with the 2170 factor? Especially if building a new battery pack anyway, also, they could eventually be used in other 2170 batteries in Nevada, perhaps. Although, I think it likely Panasonic will be adding more 4680 lines there instead. 
So this could mean Tesla are not going quite so well with their 4680 batteries just yet, but have managed to implement the advances they have achieved into the 18650 batteries and using what is available for now, they just simply aren't able to produce at that necessary speed yet, which then could imply that the new batteries are not tabless. Or it could mean that Tesla have made so many advances that they are able to incorporate them into the old form factor. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. My opinion is, as long as Tesla can demonstrate they can achieve mass scale production of the 4680 soon enough, then the stock price will eventually blow up. I'm just looking for the evidence. I think either way, and even if 4680s are somewhat delayed, this is still a promising sign of Tesla's progress. All will be revealed soon enough. We only need a few more missing pieces of the puzzle to fit in until we can see the whole picture. The trick is to work it out before Wall Street. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.